and your Bibles, your wonderful Bibles. Acts chapter 11, verse number 19. You can stay seated. Thank you for your willingness to stand. You know what? I've been, I, I've, it's been, my wife said, stop saying. It's been, it's been said that I had a standing ministry. Sister, I have a sitting ministry now. Amen. I'm going to have you sit down on the word. <laughs> Y'all didn't like the way that sounded, did you? <laughs> I'm going to have you sit down on the word. <laughs> no. Now, they, at verse number 19, I believe I said that already. I'm not sure. Acts 11 and 19. Now, they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen uh, traveled as far as uh, Phoenix and Cyprus and, emphasis mine, Antioch. And so here the persecution arose because of the death of Stephen. And now the Christians that were in Jerusalem had to be scattered. And at that time... The Christians were only in Jerusalem. It was only the apostles that remained in Jerusalem, but most of all the other Christians were scattered abroad. The Bible says that they traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and everybody say Antioch. Preaching, this is what they did. Preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. There was only a group, a certain group of people that had the word of God communicated to them. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. So it wasn't until the disciples of Christ were scattered abroad throughout all that region, and when they came to Antioch, the Grecians began to get the word of God preached unto them outside of Jerusalem. And the hand of the Lord was upon them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go forth as far as Antioch. Who when he came and had seen the grace of God, he saw the grace of God where? At Antioch. Oh, hallelujah. I said he saw the grace of God at? He went as far as? The early church traveled to? Amen. Again, verse number 23, who when, the, when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and faith and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Where was he when all that took place? You didn't realize that, did you? Many people were added unto the Lord at Antioch. Oh, hallelujah. Continue on. Verse number 25. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Paul or Saul. And when he had found him, Paul or Saul of Tarsus, Barnabas went to Tarsus to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought Saul unto where? 
Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. I want to preach to you this night on our heritage. Antioch, the apostolic church. You need to understand this is what we were birthed for. This is what we were born for. This is what we came into the kingdom of God for. You want to know who you are? You are Antioch. You have a heritage. Hallelujah. The Bible says that they were scattered abroad. The early Christians, that they weren't even Christians at that time. They were believers. They were disciples, and they were followers of Christ. But a persecution came along, a, 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 uh, a uh, what would you call, a disruption in their program, a disruption of, of how they knew things to be, and they had to get out of their norm. They had to get out of what they, they, they were comfortable with, out of their comfort zone, and they had to get out of the places that they were familiar with, and now they had to embark on something new and something different. It wasn't a comfortable place for them to be in. It was a strange place for them to be in, and now God is saying, I'm going to do something new and I have a plan for my people and my people now are going to be called Christians at Antioch. My people are going to know that I'm going to do a great work and now I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to limit this thing just to a small group, a small nucleus of people called the Jews. I'm going to tell you everybody's going to get some of this. In Antioch wasn't necessarily on the map. It was on the map, but it wasn't on the map. It was on the map, and when, when people looked and rolled out a map, but what was Antioch? Who was Antioch? It was just another place. It was just another city of the Gentiles. It was another place where Grecians would dwell. But it was the place where God said, hey, I'm going to send my gospel, and it's going to go further and beyond the regions and the range that it went before. I'm going to send it to the Grecians. I'm going to send it to the barbarians. I'm going to send it throughout all the earth. Even the Romans going to receive what I have. And it all began at Antioch. I'm talking about your heritage, folks. I'm talking about what God has called for us to be. We are Antioch, the apostolic church in 2018. We're not just Antioch by name, but we're Antioch by doctrine. We're Antioch by experience, and we're Antioch by God's purpose. And our purpose is for God to reach this world and this city. You want to know why we're always preaching, go out there and, 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 and knock doors and go out there and reach people. Go out into the communities and start Bible studies and, and, and all that and, and, and do this and do that. Pastor, you're acting for too much. We don't have that many days in the week, Pastor. Go ahead and fix my call for me. Oh, there you go. Oh, hallelujah. I need you and I want you. <laughs> Now, if you're just coming in, that was only, we were just ministering. Uh, the, the women, uh, men need to be needed and women want to be wanted. Uh, and women need to be wanted and men want to be needed. You get what I'm saying? Amen. So I'm letting them know I need you and I want you. Amen. Praise God. I don't just need you to fix my clothes even though I need you to fix my clothes. I want you to fix my clothes. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Do you know what we've been called into? At that time, it was only for the Jews. They were the only ones who can experience that. Mm. But God said, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to impact this world. And, and God needed, oh, hallelujah. God needed a place to place his name on. You see, when God wanted to deal with the, uh, uh, choose a nation for himself, and he wanted to deal with the children of Israel and the Jewish nation, God chose Jerusalem to put his name there. And the gospel of God started in Jerusalem. The power of God came down in Jerusalem, but it wasn't going to stay in Jerusalem. Hey, God began his work 
first in Jerusalem. It was the starting point. Hey, it was the, the beginning point. It was the central location. Was the epicenter, but God said, I'm going to do something new. And when I do something new, I'm going to reach all sorts of people. And when I reach all sorts of people, everybody will know that I am the Lord God Almighty. We understand that Peter stood on a, uh, a rooftop and went to sleep one day, and he got the Bible says he went into a deep trance. Amen. And and obviously it, it was uh the the uh the time of, of prayer. He was he didn't eat or whatever and, and he was hungry, obviously. And you know, if any time you're dreaming about food, man, you're hungry. I don't care what. And the Bible says, man, uh, he was laying there. He went into a deep trance, and God uh, allowed a sheet to come down, and, and in the sheet were all sorts of animals. And, 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 and Peter said, hey, all, and it was all sorts of beasts, uh, a four-footed beast that, 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 you know, he didn't eat those type of beasts. You know, they were like rabbits and all that. Man, he didn't eat rabbits, too, you know, because he was a Jew. I'm sure they had swine up in that camp and falling down. He said, no, I don't eat that kind of stuff. Hey, I don't mess around with this. I don't mess with that. We can only eat certain type of foods. And God said, no, I want you to eat. I want you to rise. I want you to kill. And I want you to eat. And Peter said, no, 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 you know I haven't eaten anything like that before. And three times God said, hey, I want you to rise, I want you to kill, and I want you to eat. You're not going to worry about what it used to be, how it used to be. You're not going to worry about any traditions and all that. I'm about to do a new thing, you see. And when Peter rose up, then he heard something happening. And people came to him from the outside. They were non-Jews. And, and they said, hey, we were told to come to you, Peter. You see, our master seen an angel that came to him and said, go look for a man named Peter. He's going to tell you what you ought to do. And Peter said, oh, okay, the Holy Ghost must be doing something different. He must be doing something new. And we know that the Bible says he went down to uh, Caesarea to um, the, 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 uh, the centurion's house, and, and he, he began to uh, preach to the centurion household. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost came on all that heard the word. I'm telling you what, there's going to be some days that God's going to lead you out there and people are going to be listening to what you had to say and the Holy Ghost is just going to fall on them and they're just going to begin to speak in other tongues. Do you believe that? I tell you, if it happened one time, it can happen again. It didn't just happen one time. I, we've had it. People, they just, we just begin to preach. We didn't talk to them about the Holy Ghost. Next thing you know, God said, I'm going to do a new thing. And, and we understand God was trying to say, I'm going to reach people beyond your, uh, your expectation. I'm going to reach people beyond your limit. I'm, I'm going to send you forth into areas that you didn't know about. And, and, but, and that was just a little taste of what God would do. But when God began to, to, to do that thing in mass numbers, he used not Jerusalem, not Caesarea, but he used Oh, hallelujah. I know God said, I'm going to put my name on Jerusalem. It's going to be for my people who dwell in Jerusalem. It's going to be for the Jews. But I'm telling you what, when I do this new thing among all the Gentiles, I'm going to put my name on another city. And it's going to be massive harvest is going to break out. It's not going to be stuck in Jerusalem. I'm going to send it forth throughout all the worlds and it's going to begin. I'm going to change the name of my disciples. They will not long, no longer be called disciples. That They will be called Christians first at do you know your heritage? Do you know where you come from? Do you know what you're a part of? Hero Antioch. What? Now the word is God going to all these people? Yes, it's going to all these people. Let me tell you, Antioch wasn't on the map, but now it's on the map. I'm going to tell you, Baltimore is not on the map yet, but Baltimore will be on the map because Antioch is here. Antioch is in Baltimore. Antioch is in Harford County. Antioch is in Baltimore County. We are Antioch. We are Antioch, the apostolic church. 
You better know your heritage. You ought to know where you come from. It's written in the Bible. God has chosen you and ordained you to be something great in this earth, in this last day. We are Antioch of this last day. God said in the New Testament church in the first century, when I'm about to do my great work in all the earth, I'm going to use Antioch to do it. I got news for you. God said in the last days, I'm going to pull out of my flesh, my spirit on all flesh, and it's going to begin at You heard the bishop preach it. You heard about the men of God who have come. Traveling from all ends of the earth, from every area in the United States. And you've heard prophecy after prophecy and vision after vision and dream after dream. And you've heard those things and those words have been spoken. And you say, how can this be? How can that happen? We're just but a few. We're just a minority. It can't be so. It will never happen. There was a great famine in Israel, throughout all the nation. It was a great famine in Samaria. It was a great famine in Jerusalem. It was a great uh, famine throughout the Middle East. And, and, and people were dying and, and, and killing their children and eating children. And, and the Bible says that people were eating dung from pigeons. And it was bad. To the place where one woman killed her son shared it with her neighbor, and they ate it. And they were supposed to eat the other woman's son after that. And the king said, oh, wow. What in the world is going on? I'm going to get the prophet, the man of God, because he's the one who started this thing, because there, he's the one who said, I don't want any rain, and there wasn't any rain. And then the famine came. But then God said, I'm about to do something. And the prophet said, I want you to know, this is, about, this is about to break. Something is about to happen. God is going to do something great. Oh, I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm telling you, Antioch, you've been hearing that some great things are going to happen, but you can't believe it. And God said, oh, I'm about to do it. The man of God said, God is about to do it. And you've been saying, I've been hearing that, but I hadn't seen anything. And God said, I'm telling you what, I'm about to do it. And there were four leprous men at the gate. And they said, the leprous men said, hey, if we just stay here, we're going to die. If we just sit here, we're going to die. If we go in there with those boys, you know they're going to kill us because they're righteous and they don't want any lepers around. And maybe we'll just go to the enemy's camp. And, hey, if they're going, we're going to die anyway maybe we'll go out there and let's just see what God's going to do those men were just the linchpins of what God was going to do let me tell you something you don't know when God is going to pull a linchpin it may be something insignificant oh how's God going to do it I don't know how he's going to do it that day he just used four leprous men and said I just want you to start marching I want you to start moving and I'm going to do something I oh they didn't go inside of the uh, p where the people of God was. They went to the enemy's camp. Maybe they just take four weak people in there. I'm not saying that you're weak. Maybe you feel that way. And you say, you know what? I don't know. Maybe God will do something. We're going to go to the enemy's camp. We're going to go out there, and maybe God's going to, and maybe that's going to be the linchpin that causes this thing to break loose. We are Antioch. We have a heritage. And let me just say it this way. Sometimes you may feel like you're the tail. We're not central. Hello? But we are Antioch. We're not West. But we're Antioch. And there's something that, uh, there's just something about Baltimore. That just people just kind of, you know, just kind of like, hmm. 
You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and people who live in Baltimore, they can't relate to that. They don't think that happens. But you know. And I used to travel and, and, and listen, and people were like, hey, where do you live? I would say, White Marsh. <laughs> Middle River. I know they ain't here in Middle River. Where you from? Middle River. Where is that? I say, it's, it's Baltimore County. Baltimore? You live in Baltimore? It's just something about it. It's almost like somebody saying, Jesus from Nazareth? Yeah. That's why I believe. That's why I believe God is going to do a great work. And he... I believe it. Hallelujah. You need to believe it. We have a heritage. We are Antioch. You're just as much as Antioch as Central. You're just as much as Antioch as, as, as West. Hey, we're one church. We're one body. We have the same calling, the same promises, the same vision, same spirit of ministry. You have the same purpose. So I'm declaring there used to be one thing that was said. And I wasn't around then. I know Elder Valley was around then. I think Sister Valley, you probably were, you was probably part of the uh, McIntyre Church, Brother McIntyre, Elder McIntyre, during that time. Uh, but uh, I think it was he, uh, here rises Antioch. Is that what it was, right? Here rises. I think you, I don't know if you were, I know you were, because you were, you were in Antioch when you were a little child, weren't you? I think she's the longest standing Antioch member around, right? You went to Antioch school. You taught in it. How long, how long have you been in Antioch? How long was it? 89. You came in 89? I think he was saying he's 83, 81, 81. So he was there. So eight, eight, 1981. Man, you old, man. <laughs> no, listen. You must have came when you were a little boy, baby boy, wasn't it? Yeah, that was what it was. Here rises Antioch. This building right here set for two years, untouched, untouched. And we were looking for a building, some of you know. And I looked and someone told me, hey, there's a building right down the street, right there here on 25th Street. I said, yeah, I rode past that building. He said, yeah, what, what you think about it? Yeah, just keep looking, brother. I saw the price on that building. I was like, we won't get in that building. Not, well, not the price that I saw. That's not going to happen. They were asking for $2 million. Um, You try to get a building with 14,000 square feet in Baltimore. Yeah. You try to get a building with 14,000 square feet. All right? This building is over 14,000 square feet inside of Baltimore City. But hold up. We didn't pay two million. We didn't pay one million. We didn't pay 500. What's impossible with man is possible with God. And God says, hey, this gonna, hey nobody else is going to bid on the building.
And I was like, no, that's not going to happen, brother. We better look at something else. So I get a call from Pastor David Wright and from Bill Benner. And um, I was looking at buildings, and they were looking at buildings, and we, I was traveling around and saying, oh, this building, that building. We looked at a number of buildings. And he said, what you think about that building? And I said, well, yeah, I, I looked at it, and I saw it. The price is kind of high. Well, we're going to meet the guy, so meet us here. I'm like, okay. And the whole time we got, got here to the building, and, <laughs> you know, I was at other places we went. I was like, yeah, yeah, this and that and everything else, you know, and knowing where the price was and everything else. And he's like, okay. We got in this building, and I know it need work. I know it needed work, and, and we've we come a long way. I, you know, it's, hey. And we still want to work, and, and one day all the paneling is going to be gone. We're going to have sheetrock. And I believe, you know, you're not going to have to scrounge or whatever. I believe God's going to bless us. I've been praying for the spoils of Egypt. The treasures of darkness, as he said, you can have. And I walked through. He said, well, you know, I walked through. We went in. It's like I went to this space and went in there. And went there. I'm looking all over. Man, this is a big building. We can do a whole lot with this building. Yes, it needs some work. But it ain't. And then. And he said, well, you, you don't look like you're too, um, Bill said, you don't look like you're too thrilled. Or, well, you, don't, you don't like real estate? Yeah. And, and uh, so Pastor Wright, Pastor Dave Wright said, he said, uh, yeah, I know, I know what he's thinking. Like, he's not, he not trying to get his hopes up high. He said, you got that right. <laughs> A few months later. Now, in April, April of uh, April the 29th, we will be celebrating our third year anniversary here. And I believe in this, that God is going to do something in the third year here. Oh, hallelujah. God gave this building to Antioch for a reason. Baltimore County, out in Parkville, we, uh, we looked all over, right in, the, what is it, Moravia, uh, Frankfurt area, I guess, Gardenville area, we was kind of looking all over the place, trying to see what God would do, and what I like about this building, meaning its location, first of all, we smack dab right in the center. right in the middle of the city. And you go one way, that way it's a whole different whatever. We are diverse right here. There's so many people that are represented. Where some of the barriers are taken down just by the, because of the location. And we are already beginning to see barriers broken. I don't know where Sister Tony is from. Guam. We have Sister Tony from Guam, faithful member of the church. Who would have thought we would have had someone? I don't know. You can't. You don't call them Guamish. What are they? Guam? What was it? Okay. Well, I'll say Guamish. <laughs> Guamer, <laughs> I don't know. Somebody, if you know, who would have thought we would have had Vietnamese people here? Who would have thought that? I'm telling you what, folks, it's about to happen. Not because of what we are individually or who we are individually, but because God called us to be a part of Antioch. almost done. That vision, those prophecies that have been spoken concerning Anne Arundel County, and that was for the central location. 
But there have been promises concerning Baltimore, this location. We've, been, we've started praying for other counties. Uh, it's first started in Harford County. And I believe we probably have a good maybe 15 people uh, that attend our congregation from Harford County alone. Maybe may more. You got all the whole digs. It's about 15 digs anyway, right? <laughs> I'm including the ones that don't come yet. Yet. We have a Vietnamese household in, in Harford County, a in Abingdon. Yeah. We baptized some of the family members. We have a sister right here from Abingdon. Mm-hmm. See, I, I knew I was in the will of God when I moved out to Abingdon. <laughs> My wife didn't want to go. We, we're not there now, but I, I believe something happened. Something started. Edgewood. We have people from Edgewood. Different, and we have more people that we're connected to in Edgewood, family members and stuff like that. This, these folks are from Edgewood right, right now. And I know there are a number of people that are not here that's, a part that's from Edgewood. Stand up if you're from Harford County. And again, this is not all. The, uh, the man you were, he's, he's from Harford. And there are more people. That's probably more that are not here that are here. And we have uh, Sister Tony, etc. Go ahead and be seated. Oh, let me tell you, share this with you. And this, can I share this? You know I'm talk, looking at you because you know I'm great going. So I, I get an e uh, email ch uh, chain. They, uh, Sister Nakina Brown and Sister... Um, Tony uh, from Guam, they started a Bible study on the Aberdeen Proving Ground. And they already had people th that want to participate in that Bible study. Their supervisor gave them permission. They got a room to use. They got people who already want to participate in the Bible study. Yeah. There are no limitations to what God is doing and what he will do. I just want to remind you tonight, folks, you may feel detached. Many of us have spent much time, many hours at 1535 Ritchie Highway. And you may feel isolated, but hear me today, hear me tonight, we're not. And really soon, if it, haven't, uh, it may have already happened, that those who don't even go on the hill or have never been on the hill, or maybe only go infrequently, they weren't born on the hill, they were born here. Right. I'm talking about born spiritually. Yeah. That number is going to overtake. Now, I'm going to do this. If you started attending this church since we've become a congregation and all our services have been here, I want you to stand up. And I know most people come on Sundays. I didn't say that clearly enough. I'm going to say it really clear. You may have visited the hill, but when you first started coming to church here, it was Sunday morning services and Sunday evening services in this building. Stand up. Yeah, well, I know there are more people. Let me put on my glasses. Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. 
All right. And you can just wave your hands. Sister Shalon, you can wave your hands. I'm telling you right now, this is just a Sunday night. Sunday mornings, we are going to be the minority really soon. God is changing. We're always going to be Antioch, hear me. Always going to be one church. But he's changing the dynamic, and you all can, everyone can stand. He's changing the, the dynamic of this congregation. Because we are an outreach entity. Not a sole entity on our own. We're not an independent, isolated entity. But we are an outreach entity. Our purpose here in Baltimore, and whether we go in different other counties, but this is the center, the epicenter of what God is doing in Baltimore. We are outreach driven because that is the spirit of ministry here at this location, is to reach those that are lost. The gospel says this, or the Bible says this, Jesus Christ came to seek, that's first, seek. We want the lost to be saved, but we got to go out and seek. We can't expect them to come here to seek. We got to go out there and seek. To seek and to save that which is lost. God used this epicenter called Antioch. And it was the place that people went out. It was the place that Paul began his missionary journeys to go out and affect the world. I just come to remind you, Antioch North of your heritage, of your purpose, and of your calling. We have a purpose, we have an identity, and we have an heritage. Here, O Antioch, let's fulfill God's promise, God's purpose for this church. Won't you just lift your hands up to him one more time. Father, we love you, we thank you. We appreciate everything that you're doing. Everything that you're doing in this ministry, in this church. Lord, we acknowledge that sometimes, God, we, we don't quite understand. And sometimes, Lord, we hang our heads. And sometimes we lose focus. And we lose our identity of who we are. But, God, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that we've been reminded of your purpose, of our heritage and of our purpose in you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we, we shouldn't hold our heads down, but high above, not because of something that we are, Lord. We're nothing without you. We can do nothing without you. God, we're just the dust of the earth without you. We need you, Lord, as you have shaped and formed and molded us and given us the breath of life. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would use this congregation for your will and your purpose in this hour. In Jesus' name, God, I pray faith upon this people. I pray commitment upon this people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Remind us once again, Lord, of your high calling. In Jesus' name, praise God. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.